everybody. This is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Tomorrow is going to be a busy day as it's our farmer's market day and I have some things I have to get ready to take to the farmer's market including some cold sore relief lip balm. Many of you guys have asked how I do it and I've been hesitant to share because I do sell it um, for an income for myself. But um, because I also got this recipe based off somebody else's recipe that's free online, I figured it would be fair enough to share it with you. So I'm going to take you to the kitchen where I have a lot of things going on there and show you how we put the cold sore relief lip balm together. So let's head on over to the kitchen. Okay, so this is my kitchen table, um, but it gets used mainly as a counter and a workspace. I uh, do a lot of my soap making, my painting and things on this table. And I figured I'd show you what we have going on today. Like I said, I have a lot of things going on. I am canning tomatoes. I am working on tie-dye. I have all these canned items. I need to figure out where to put them. Lots of beans here. Um, I have paintings that I uh, just finished varnishing. So there's one of my paintings that's getting ready uh, to be available for sale. Whoops, sorry about the glare. And then I also have uh, my crock pot turned on to heat up my beeswax to make my lip balm. So I have all that going on. And I also have my herbal oil. This has been infusing for about four weeks or so. You can watch my video on how to make uh, herbal infusions. And um, I will link that below. I'm going to get ready to strain this. And then I'll show you how we put together the lip balm. Okay. So to make the lip balm, we need a couple of... Um, uh, basic items and some specialty items. I have my bowl here that I'm going to be using to uh, combine my oils in. And then I have my special um, pitcher. This is a plastic pitcher that I use to put my beeswax in. I keep this in a uh, sealed baggie because you can't really clean the beeswax out. Beeswax sticks to things. So to keep it clean, I just keep it in this baggie with its little spoon. Um, so this is what I use to measure my beeswax. And then we have um, for specialty items, this is a lip balm tube holder. This is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And then we have the lip balm tubes and caps and these are from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I will put a link in the description below where you can get uh, those items. Um, I have this is a uh, uh, nut bag, a uh, nut milk bag um, that I used um, to, for my infusions. I made elderberry um, uh, cold syrup the other day and so it's discolored my nut bag but it works very well for squeezing out infusions and getting all the oils and juices out. So I highly recommend uh, a uh, nutmeg or a cheesecloth uh, to do that. Uh, I have a little scraper here that I use to scrape the, the uh, top of the mold when uh, I'm done filling and you'll see how that works. I have my pipette. And then I have my essential oils. I have uh, peppermint, I have tea tree, I have uh, clove, and then I also have vitamin E. And again, I have my homemade infused oil, which has, um, let's see, what's in it? Lemon balm, plantain, and calendula is in here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I strain this and we'll get ready to make lip balms. Okay, so another thing to get is a, um, if you're going to do some infusions, of course, is a, a strainer. This is just a simple wire mesh strainer. Um, 
I got them in a pack of three. I really like them. They're hard to find sometimes, so I try to stock up if I see them because they do wear out after a while. <clears throat> so I'm just putting on some gloves because we are working with oil and we are working with um, items that are going to be for sale. So we want to make sure that uh, we keep things as hygienically clean as possible. So I'm just basically pouring off the top portion right now. this out of the way. And if you remember, we put in here um, a, a weight that kept the um, uh, herbs below the oil. And that's gone all the way down into the um, container. So we actually have to remove that. So again, this is just a, a weight that comes with a fermenting kit. So I really, really like these. All right, now what we're going to do next is we're going to take our uh, milk bag here and we're just going to put it over the top and draw a string it around the opening of the jar just to help keep it on while we flip it upside down. I'm just going to flip this upside down and give it a good shake. Right. Sometimes it doesn't go as planned, so you have to work with it a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but the calendula has still retained its color. It's kind of cool. I have the orange here, and I have uh, the yellow one here. Then we're just going to cinch this up and squeeze it out. See all that oil that's still stuck in there? That mixed with the um, whatever juices are left in the plants. We want all that into this oil here. good. You don't want to overwork your hands and hurt yourself. You just want to get as much as you can out. Alright, so I'm going to go take care of this. And then we're going to carefully try to pour this back into this container. All 
Alright. So there's our herbal infusion strain. And I'm going to clean up the table here and see how our beeswax is doing and get my other oils prepped. Then I'll bring it back and we'll start working on the actual lip balms themselves. Okay, so there's a couple other tools I forgot to mention that are very important. Um, you want to get yourself a uh, scale. Um, you can do this by um, using tablespoons or whatever because the recipe does say, uh, measure in tablespoons. But to get an accurate uh, consistency, a good recipe, it's best to uh, weigh your ingredients. So uh, this is very inexpensive. I think it cost me $20. And uh, it's lasted me a long time. As you can see, it's getting a lot of use. So kitchen scale is important. And then also, since we're working with beeswax and um, some oils, we want to make sure that the temperatures are the same. So we need to have a thermometer that uh, we can use to read the temperatures. Like right now, my mixture is sitting at 138. I'm actually going to need to get that a little hotter because the beeswax sits at about 160, 170 um, in its melted state. And if this is too cool, when you pour the beeswax in, it'll solidify. And um, it's just a pain in the butt to try to get it all remelted again. So we actually need to get this uh, up to temperature. And then we're going to be adding our shea butter. Shea butter, um, you don't want to get too hot. Um, so I don't suggest putting it in the microwave. What we're going to do is once we get this out of the microwave, we'll use the residual heat to melt the shea butter. Alright, we're sitting at 190, which is plenty warm. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get our shea butter in there. Mm. And I'll give you guys all the measurements as soon as I get these mixed. There we go. Put that in there. And like I said, we're just going to use the residual heat as much as possible to let that shea butter melt. If we have to pop it in back in the microwave, we can do so on about a 15 second burst. Again, you don't want to get that shea butter too hot. It does not like it. It actually deteriorates the, uh, the special properties in that shea butter. Alright, so while that's doing that, I actually have to get my infused oil going. Okay, just going to use this nice little cup here. And we're going to do... Uh, two and a half ounces of this. Right, that's a little too much. And this herbal infusion I actually put in my refrigerator so it stays um, fresher longer. Um, it has shelf life about six months if you put it in the refrigerator. Um, you will have to bring it up to temperature when you use it, but we do that anyway so that's not a big deal. <clears throat> All right. I have to take this over to my beeswax. 
Shea butter's melting nicely. Let's see what our temperature's holding at. Oh, we're actually going to need to pop this back in the microwave, which is fine. I'm going to add my herbal infusion to it while we're at it. Okay, while we're waiting for the oils to warm up and the beeswax to warm up, it's just about there. We're going to get our lip balm tubes ready to go because this actually goes pretty fast once everything's ready. <sighs> so take my little tubes. And this has a smooth side and then the rough side. The rough side is where you stick your tubes. And then just fit in. They're not snug as a bug, so you can't just go flinging it around. But they do stick in fairly good. The one thing I don't understand though <laughs> is this uh, this holder holds 50 lip balm tubes. They sell the lip balm tube in multiples of 12. So um, I have 48 lip balm tubes instead of an even 50. So I actually have to get a couple bags. That way I don't, uh, you know, I have a full tray. You don't have to have a full tray. You can do a partial tray. It works very well that way. Um, but uh, because I do deal in large quantities, I like getting a full tray done. My microwave is screaming at me because I am not going over and checked on it. And I keep those bags because I put the lip balms right back in them once they're done. Easy storage. I like to reuse as much as possible. Oh, we're actually going to have 50. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes whoever counts and put those in, in here don't count correctly. Alright. So there we go. Lip balm tubes. Okay. Alright. So here's the measurements for um, I'm making a double batch and it makes enough for these plus a little extra. So you need, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 2.5 ounces of the infused oil. You need four, uh, 0.4 ounces avocado oil, 0.4 ounces of castor oil, one ounce of coconut oil, one ounce of shea butter. And then um, the beeswax is also going to be one ounce. And then to that, uh, we're going to be uh, adding 15 drops of tea tree oil, 25 drops of peppermint oil, two drops of clove oil, and 10 drops of vitamin E. And we have to wait till the mixture cools down a little bit before we can add those um, because the essential oils have an evaporation point known as a flash point um, that's uh, pretty low. I think um, peppermint's like 125, 130. So um, we need to make sure that we let the mixture cool down enough where we can add the essential oils without them evaporating. But we do have to work quickly because once the um, temperature gets down to that point, it starts hardening up. And we have to have it fluid in order to fill our uh, molds. 
All right, correction on that with me doing a double batch. I actually need two ounces of beeswax. I actually do 2.5 just to make sure I have enough wax because I do have a lot of oil in here. Okay, so our temperature's down where it needs to be. So we're going to go ahead and add our essential oils. Alright, so peppermint was 25 drops. is 15 clove is 2 that's a little bit more than 2 but clove is very good it's an antiseptic And 10 drops of vitamin E. Alright, I'm going to mix that in. Like I said, it starts to get thick once it gets down to that 135 point. So we're going to not mess around too much longer. Pour this in. You also have to have this down around 130 because that is the recommended um, temperature to fill your lip balm tubes. Just taking the excess here and moving it over. Hmm. Looks like a hot mess right now and it actually is. I'll well, set up in just a few minutes and then we're going to take um, a heat gun to it. Alright, so we're going to take a little scraper tool and we're just going to scrape the top of this like so. won't go to waste. I actually put it in a, another tin for home use. So we're going to take our heat gun, put on low, That just 
just gets the divots to fill in just a little bit better. All right, now we're ready to cap these things. So we're just gonna take this and turn it back upside down. Just uh, pop them off, put the caps on. Just like that. And that's all there is to making the lip balm. Now I label these as I do uh, sell them. And um, if you're giving them away or if you want to sell them, you do have to label them uh, with the ingredients. <clears throat> but yeah, that's all there is to it. So I hope that I helped you understand on how to make um, a simple uh, cold uh, sore relief lip balm. Um, and this, uh, just uh, uh, a disclaimer, this only helps relieve the symptoms of the cold sore. It does not actually, um, you know, solve your cold sore problem. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you seek the appropriate medical advice and uh, get adequate rest and nutrition and drink lots of water. So, thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope wherever you are that you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.